I've been living with this 2023 Mazda CX-50 for the last week and I want to talk about my experience, the things that I like and dislike about this crossover. Now I will be fully transparent with you guys, I didn't know what a CX-50 was until I got hold of this car. The CX-5 crossover has been around for a long time and it's quickly become one of the most popular mid-size crossovers at least here in the Bay Area, California. I see them everywhere and they are a great competitor to the Toyota RAV4 and Honda CRV. But what exactly is the CX-50? Well, in a nutshell, this is a more rugged alternative to the CX-5 and it definitely stands out in the way it looks. The roof line is a little bit lower and the overall body style is a bit longer. And in fully loaded turbo premium plus trim, this car has an MSRP of just over $42,000. So what do I like about the CX-50? Well, I absolutely love the exterior and interior design. Mazda's overall design language is a lot more appealing to me personally compared to some of the other Japanese competitors. I like to summarize the brand's design language as understated elegance. And that's what Mazda has become known for in recent years. They're able to offer a wide range of vehicles that look and feel more premium than their competitors in the same price range. I would say that this fully loaded CX-50 feels just as premium, if not a little more premium, than some entry-level luxury cars. I absolutely love this three-spoke steering wheel. It makes the car have a sporty feel even before you start driving it. The materials on the dash here are all very nice. I'm not entirely sold on this stitching on this length of leather across the dash. We've got this panoramic sunroof, a super clever digital dash where the speedometer appears to be analog at first, but as you switch through some of the displays here, it'll actually completely change the layout of information depending on which screen you're on. And additionally, this might sound silly, but the sounds and the jingles that this car makes from its controls feel super premium. Just listen to this turn signal for a moment. It has this satisfying click that almost sounds like someone snapping their fingers. It's not intrusive, it's not annoying, it just, it's really pleasant to the ear. Overall, I find the interior to be very ergonomically designed as well. It's very logical and easy to use. I'm a huge fan of having a dedicated display for the climate controls. Always knowing where my climate controls are at, what the temperature and fan speed are set to, and having dedicated buttons to control it. It seems like such a simple ask, but nowadays so many cars are moving to touchscreen controls integrated into the main infotainment display. It's definitely a pet peeve of mine, and I appreciate this back to basics approach from Mazda. This car also has rear heated seats, which is especially nice for colder climates. I'm also a big fan of the utility of the CX-50 because of it is longer than a CX-5, it's great for road trips and for hauling furniture and luggage. While simultaneously not feeling too tall, it doesn't feel like a big old boat of an SUV. And the trunk has automated opening and closing, which makes loading and unloading that much easier. You get a standard predictive reversing camera as well as a bird's eye view camera, which makes parking the CX-50 a cinch. Mechanically, the CX-50 is actually great to drive. For a while now, Mazda has been known for designing great to drive everyday vehicles. And the CX-50 is no exception. It's powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four engine with 87 octane, the engine produces 227 horsepower and 310 foot pounds. But with 93 octane, it produces 256 horsepower and just a little bit more torque at 320 foot pounds. For a car that weighs 3,800, maybe 3,900 pounds, that might not sound like a lot of power, but the way Mazda has tuned this engine makes it feel super torquey down low. It feels like it's making all 300 plus foot pounds from about a thousand RPM. When you just want instant passing power without having to downshift a couple of gears, this engine gives you all the low end torque you could ask for. Second gear, 1,200 RPM. <laughs> It's properly quick down low, and the engine doesn't make a bad sound, in my opinion. It's actually got kind of a nice intake growl to it. <laughs> now,
Now this engine is mated to a six speed torque converter automatic. And while that sounds very archaic by today's standards, when most cars are equipped with eight speed or even nine speed transmissions, I'm happy to say that only having six gears is not a problem because of the way this engine is tuned. You really don't have to work the gearbox hard at all to get the most out of this engine. And sixth gear is plenty tall for freeway cruising. The RPM stays nice and low even at 80 miles an hour. Now, last but not least, what do I like about the CX-50? Well, I love that it stands out. In a sea of boring crossovers, this CX-50 really has some visual impact to it. I see CX-5s all over the place now, and while that still is a very good looking crossover, better looking in my opinion than the RAV4 or Honda CR-V, the CX-50 takes it up another notch. Again, because it has a lower roof line, a longer overall body style, and it has those rugged fender flares. In my opinion, it looks so much better than one of its main competitors in the Subaru Outback. But like any car, it's not all good. There are a few gripes I have with the CX-50. First and foremost is the infotainment system. I love the fact that it has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which works seamlessly, by the way. The startup is very quick and it's very responsive and smooth, but Mazda has opted to go for this dual input method. You can use this rotary dial here to control what's on the display, but it's not the easiest thing to use, in my opinion. I've been trying to use it for about a week now, and I find myself greatly preferring to use a touchscreen at least for navigation, Spotify, and so forth within Android Auto. Well, the good thing is, this main infotainment display is a touch screen. The bad thing is, look how far I have to reach to actually use it. Frankly, I don't know why the screen couldn't be four or five inches further up and closer to the driver. And it also doesn't help that the screen is on the smaller side. It just makes for an overall slightly awkward experience if you'd rather use a touch screen than the rotary dial. Even the touchscreen in my 2022 Subaru BRZ is way easier to use. It's positioned much closer to the steering wheel and to the driver. Now, the second thing that I think could be improved in the CX-50 is the overall ride comfort and NVH. Now, driving around at 30, 40 miles an hour, you don't notice an issue really, but on the freeway cruising at around 70 to 80 miles an hour, I definitely noticed a little bit more road noise than I expected. It's not bad by any means, you can still easily hold a conversation with your passengers, but for a car that looks and feels so premium inside and out, the NVH level is definitely a little bit higher than I would like. Ride quality over bumps is also just slightly worse than I would expect, but I am nitpicking. I would say overall, it's still a very comfortable crossover. And last but not least, I do think the tech in the CX-50 is slightly lagging behind the competition. It does have radar cruise control, but it doesn't work as seamlessly as in some of the other cars from other manufacturers that I've driven, like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, for example. But overall, I'm super, super impressed with the CX-50. Even at its fully loaded price point of over $42,000, I think this crossover is one of the best in the segment in terms of styling, interior design and build quality. If those factors are your priorities, then the CX-50 is worth serious consideration. Let me know how you guys think the CX-50 stacks up against other crossovers in this segment. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you in the next one.